and uh, he finished the Mechie Malley here at Tel Aviv University, and he came to us with advice, what should he do? And he had been a, a good student, and I was really very quite selfish, and, and over the years, I mean, he understood it, but not in the beginning. I said, Neil, we will support you financially, whatever you want to do. You want to go to the States? Go. But if you, go, if you want to go to the States, you only apply to three schools. Harvard, Yale, and Princeton. That's it. N knowing he would never get in. <laughs> he got a scholarship to Princeton. So, so he went to Princeton. He came back, served in the artillery, the Tote Khalim, mm -hmm. and then became involved with a woman. Who, and they fell in love, and then he went back to MIT for his master's mm -hmm. and ended up in Boston. They loved Boston. And they're... And you, so you are on the road. We're here with, we created our own fa extended yeah. family. But you are on the road, you are going to visit him somewhere. We see, yeah, we were both ways. Yeah, well, it's getting hard to travel. We had a 91-year-old Rebetzin, the, the wife of, our, of the rabbi, the Bat Mitzvah Joanne, came three nights ago. You know how she flew? To save $300, Air Jordan. Standing. <laughs> no, no, Air Jordan. To Kennedy to Amman to, to Ben Gurion. Really? $300 cheaper. But 91, still with it. It's Sharp. good to spread the genes. That's what my mother used to say. Yeah. She, she was very happy that my, uh, my brother went to the United States. But the grandchildren, they're all here. But they yeah. have American citizenship. You know, I think out from due to the Shoah and what we have, you know, the spread of genes, yeah. Maybe some of some Jews think about it. <laughs> That's not my mother's. I, I I'll go to another question. You you uh, I mean you were involved in, a lot in the university here and the school of dentistry and orthodontic department. Uh, have you been in, involved in the uh, organization in the American Israeli Association of Orthodontics? Well, I was president. You were president when? <laughs> no, oh, really? listen. Really? They are trying to find the history. I mean, uh, you were a president when? Oh, yeah, and the vice president was I think. Uh, Either Strauss or Eddie Gazit. I, I think Eddie Gazit was the vice president. I don't remember. But um, the program chairman was Strauss. That's when we brought Setlin over and, and Professor Mura from Tokyo. I remember him being oh, here. We yeah, brought yeah, those guys over. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. No, Strauss yeah. has connections all over. I mean, yeah, yeah. He does good. have connections. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, it's very good. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. very good. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so uh, yes, I was president and the, the records are floating around somewhere. Yeah. You know, Professor Lumen, I told him many times that I owe my good profession that I like so much to him. Oh, yeah. Sure. Because he accepted Listen, me and, uh, you know. And <laughs> you had a I good, good faculty. Who had a rich faculty? And the only big loss we had was you. <laughs> no, it's not a big loss. There was a big so. loss. There was a big loss, yeah. Uh, one question before last. Why do we do the interview in English? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, well, look. In what? Everyone's no, I mean, in English. It's, no. It's Why do we? Uh, do have to be, do? Because although I can get by in, in a supermarket, in the, but I can't have a philosophical. How come? Um, well, with such a talented man, you know, with. Okay. Well, it, I'll, like I'll, quote, I'll quote uh, Chaim Weizmann's wife. <laughs> They ask Chaim Weizmann's wife. You, you don't quote Moses. <laughs> Chaim Weizmann's not that, that far back. Chaim Weizmann said, aren't you embarrassed? Your husband is president of Israel and you can't speak Hebrew. She said, it's much easier to be embarrassed than to learn this crazy language. <laughs> <laughs> this is very nice. <laughs> David, does David speak Hebrew? Yes. yes. She, speaks yeah. Hebrew. she does speak Hebrew? Yeah. And, uh, and my children, of course. Mm -hmm. And your children, of course. I mean, they were trained here. And, it's uh, difficult. Uh, educated here. Educated. Yeah. Educated here. <laughs> uh, okay. And, in, think, and the la we think Atari. you contributed a lot. What, how I, do you don't, see don't your contribution? Would you like to add something that maybe we uh, forgot to, uh, to ask you? No, I think you did a good job. And I want people to understand that, that Israel is really in the forefront today in terms of, oh, well, the one thing we left out, and that's public health, public health orthodontics. And that's interesting. We were on a trip to South America with uh, the FD, FDR, what's the I, whatever, some organization uh, that meets once a year. And on the bus was Goldenberg. Remember Goldenberg? Yeah. He was head of the Copatulian mm -hmm. services. 
on the same bus together, became friends. And I said to him, why don't you send us, because at that time they were, they were just removables. Mm -hmm. So why don't you send us some of your people, we'll educate them with fixed appliances, and they'll give you back a couple of years, whatever. And that's how it, that's how it got you started, didn't. the whole thing, yeah. Yes. So that, that, for what I'm proud of, didn't, uh, even though a lot of my colleagues were angry because we were interfering with their livelihood in a way, that we introduced a second choice for patients, not not either an expensive orthodontist or, or a, a, a Schwarz plate or whatever they were using. Mm -hmm. So that was. So you are involved also in this. Well, we basically. Why, why doesn't you know? Why can't you do it today as well? Because I think that uh, the, the population deserve it. Well, there are plenty of kupot who yes, have orthodontics. Yes, but you know that you. To study. But orthodontics that's a problem you know it's very expensive now to study nowadays you you, you in the school now it costs a hundred thousand checkers a year or something like something this like that. what do you think about that about subsidizing from three hundred dollars a year to uh, uh, yeah a hundred thousand checkers here it's which is about twenty five thousand dollars a year for a Israeli student today to one year I mean if they want to become orthodontists they have to pay half a million checkers and it's like a buying a mm -hmm. Uh, an apartment yeah. to take, to take a mortgage. What do you think about that? Uh, there, there is a need to be able to subsidize deserving candidates who can't afford to handle it financially. There should be, but has, the problem that, is the problem is, is that who's going you to know do you it? appeal you apply uh, people that can apply is people that can afford it, which means that if like eighty students uh, graduate uh, dentistry in Israel. Maybe five can afford it, and I'm not sure that they are the best uh, students in the world because they can afford it. We have to, to do something about it that we will take the best, and then we will do something about the, the tuitions. Tuitions are very high, extremely high. Yeah. I don't have an answer for you. You don't have an I've been a finder, fundraiser <coughs> all my life. I started out <laughs> fundraising for Israel, then for Tel Aviv University. So I've been I've done a lot of fundraising, but uh, maybe Kupachonim, if they would pay for the tuition, because the government doesn't want to pay. Well, that's what, that's how it started. It started with the Kupachonim paying for their education. I know, mm -hmm. and, and, the and actually, all of them are still working. Yeah. Mo maybe not all of them, yes. but all your graduates, most of your yeah. graduates are still working for Kupachonim. They graduated in the also beginning in the 90s. And we are uh, like yeah. 25 years. They are in. But those who are graduating. This was a nowadays, great contribution. This no. was, but they uh, you you made it. You had it only for one course. No, no, no. no. We had about three courses. Three courses. Yeah. But nowadays, those who finish now, they also they work in Kupat Cholim because they have no choice. They yeah. have no other choice. Yeah. yeah. They don't have. Yes. Why? Why don't you? Um, why? Why? Maybe it's a different question. Mm. Why do we have a school now? You have uh, how many? Uh, how many graduate students do we have? Not Israelis, I mean, in the whole school that we have. About 10 to 12. 12. Why don't you have them all Israelis and you have to, uh, to, uh, to ex um, this is not export? Ah. It's after the, the era of Professor <laughs> I know Roman it's after your era. I know, I know. But what do you think about person. it? I can ask what do you think no, about it. No, I think it? it's fine. I think there's... That we export an orthodontics yeah. instead of uh, for England? I think we don't, it's have, it's a short, we don't have a shortage of... You think that we don't have a shortage? Of Israeli orthodontists? I don't think that you are in the field. That's good. No, you're not in the field because okay. what happens is that now people that finishing, you know, uh, uh, Saturday weekend courses are the, are the leading, uh, most of, some of them are the leading orthodontists in the uh, services of public services. I, I meet them. I'm in the field. Because the public services take them. The public service has, n because the, n the, the, not there public. is a shortage, Even the shortage of specialists. Even the public services are not public. It's not public. What do you mean? It's all private. I know it's, it's private. Private, private company. No but still, they are subsidized. But they are subsidized. So instead of having 12, uh, yeah, every three years you have 12 graduates, I mean, every year you have, or every two years you have uh, graduates, 12, why not uh, having more orthodontists in Israel? I don't think they have enough. You know, this we have the dispute. I don't yeah, think okay, we have enough. Okay, I was not aware that. You are not, in the, uh, you are not yeah. in the field because there is a big demand for orthodontists especially in the periphery. Tel Aviv is loaded. Tel Aviv, there is enough. There yeah. are enough. Maybe not. Maybe, I don't know. But uh, 
we we are eight point three million people in Israel. Yeah. Maybe it's in and, the island of And we have uh, uh, how many specialists we have? Maybe two hundred specialists. Maybe two hundred and ten specialists. We have. I don't think that. Uh, okay, so there are more schools now. Forty thousand for each. There is now in Meir Rambam. There is in Tel Shomer. There are four schools now for orthodontics. Only two dental school and four schools for orthodontics. Yes. Have you ever nice. been? Have you ever? When's the last time you were at Rambam? In the I've, been I've seen it outside. I haven't been in there. Been there. Take a look on the wall until you see a plaque to Dr. Harry Seldon. Okay, you know the name? Uh, Sheldon. Seldon. 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 No, it come. I have to remember. Okay, so I'm watching uh, uh, Hagi Tsuri's wife. Uh, Hagi of blessed memory was a plastic surgeon here. <laughs> Hagi's Hag uh, wife uh, uh, was a, uh, showing a film at the Cinematheque on the Altalena. Mm -hmm. And the credits, I see Dr. Harry Seldon, uh, ex-American, I just, he was just a name I knew from America. Mm -hmm. I said, after the movie, I said, uh, I forgot her name, I'm terrible with names. Uh, how did Harry Seldon come to your movie? She said, he happened to be on vacation in Israel on the beach with his movie camera when the Alta Lena was attacked. Really? And his part of, the, of her movie was his film. Ups. Wow. He was a, he was a really, uh, uh, an American famous maxillofacial surgeon. His favorite patient mm -hmm. was Betty Davis, the actress, mm -hmm. who had osteomyelitis. Wouldn't go on stage if he wasn't in the audience. Really? Wow. Yeah, Harry Seldon, but his name's up there it's, uh, at uh, in Rambam. It's funny, I, uh, I saw the, uh, I just was looking for the Alta Lena memorial site in Tel Aviv. I, oh. I, every time I'm, I'm, I'm on the beach three times a week biking oh. and I'm, I, I want to know exactly where Aunt Elena was, you know, happened and yesterday, I, <laughs> yesterday I found it. Look at that. Yesterday I found it uh, where exactly and there is a memorial, a beautiful memorial yeah. ne next to uh, Metzada Coffee. Oh, okay. There is a beautiful memorial in the shape of the boat with the writing what was the story of Aunt Elena. It's f really funny because we went to uh, to the museum to see the uh, the uh, 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 photographer uh, Robert Kappa. Oh, uh, I, 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 we miss, I, you I think it's still there. You should see. I want to desperately he also see was it. There. He also we was couldn't find a parking place. I went in with go my car instead of going by bus right. or by cab. I took a car yeah. with friends from Jerusalem. And, and you couldn't find the couldn't parking. Find, the, the lot was full. All the lots I used to go to you were full. You should go if it's still there, Robert yes. Kappa. Yes, you should yes. see it. It's an amazing. Yeah, yeah, and there okay. are he also was in Israel while he took some pictures yeah. of this, and uh, it's an amazing, yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah. Uh, photographer Thank you very and then, much. Uh, okay. Let's finish. Yeah. The Thank other side like the history is that Jimmy Ackerman's cousin is was dating uh, Zed Abrams when she lived in South Africa, and she's now married to the ophthalmologist that did my cataracts, Zuckerman. Yeah. Jay Zuckerman. His wife is an Ackerman. She was Jimmy's second cousin, and, and they're still and they in touch by live, email. They live here. Yeah, they live yeah. here. Yeah, she does. Yeah, but Zev, she and Zev dated each other on the beaches of South Africa when they grew oh, really? up. How come your teeth are not crooked in the bottom? I don't know. They were spaced. They were spaced? I never had orthodontics. You never had orthodontics? No. no. <laughs> I had, you know, I you had, had for the one spacing. Day. <laughs> no, I had spacing as a child. And then I had a holy, retain, like a holy with a, like? with a, a arch, with the arch that was squeezed from time to time. And uh, five years I had it, mm -hmm. and that's it. And now, after after a while, I think spacing a little bit open because from 